everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendations video. So this one was kind of interesting, um, you know, about once a month I ask everyone for, you know, what recommendation videos they would like to have, you know, and I usually get it sent to me like by tropes, so they'll ask for my favorites of something. Um, and with this one, someone asked for my favorite trilogies. And I realized that I have done my favorite series that had more than three books and I've done my favorite standalones but I hadn't done trilogies. So this was actually harder than I was expecting because a lot of the series I love are either like duets or they are many, many, many books. Like there's rarely ones that are like just three, but I was able to pull together some. So I thought I would get started with it. So we'll start with the two historical trilogies I have because it was by far the hardest to find just trilogies for this, right? And I wanted to talk about what my favorites are. Okay, so this is a trilogy I used to, I talked about quite a bit last year. It just, it just does it for me so well. Um, and that is The Hellions of Habisham by Lorraine Heath. You probably heard of this series because of this bad boy right here, The Earl Takes All, but it actually starts with this one called Falling Into Bed with a Duke. And this one is very interesting. It's about this girl named Miss Minerva Dodger, who I have not read of all, all of Lorraine Heath, but I'm pretty sure there's a love story for her parents as well exists because Lorraine connects most of her series together. And this one is about a girl like she is tired of people coming after her for her money because though she's not a lady, like she's just a miss, she's not Lady Minerva, her father is very wealthy and he's given her a very big dowry, which means the fortune hunters have been coming for her. And so she decides that she doesn't want to deal with the getting married part, but she does want to lose her virginity. So she goes to a place called, I believe it's the Nightingale Club, which is actually based on a real club that the rain um, looked up. Yes, it's based on the Parrot Club, which was a house where ladies who could meet and share lovers. But in this one, the women all get to wear masks um, and the men have to let the women choose them. And so she ends up meeting this guy named the Duke of Ashbury there. Of course, she recognizes who he is, that he doesn't know who she is. And he actually has a secret love for photography. So he actually goes there to find women who will let him photograph their hands and feet because he doesn't photograph in a sexual nature, but to see ladies' feet and ankles was considered very sexual. So he needs to go to a place where he'll find a woman who he maybe does end up having sex with, but also he really likes to photograph and they get kind of caught up in that together. It's really cute. Um, then of course there's the Earl Take All. This is the one that you've probably heard about. It's the absolutely bonkers plot where um, it was these twin brothers and the one who has a wife, he dies on a safari. And so the other brother comes back and pretends to be him so that his wife won't have a miscarriage because she's had quite a few miscarriages and he's worried that his wife will lose this baby as well. The thing is, this brother who is pretending to be his brother, he has secretly held a torch for his sister-in-law. You know, he would never have made a move on it, but it is like, it's a thing basically is what it, what it means. It's a thing. And so it's harder than he thought. Um, then I, the third one is the Viscount and the Vixen. And now this one doesn't get enough love. Um, I absolutely love how this trilogy wraps up because this story in and of itself is really great. It's about a girl named Portia who she is pregnant. She got pregnant in a very, um, like unfortunate situation and she needs a husband. So she gets courted by, um, well, she's writing letters to the Viscount, uh, not the Viscount, to the Duke, I think. Yes. And, or the Marquis. Yes, the Marquis. And he's old and we know that he's considered like a mad Marquis in this series. He's actually the man who raised these three men, the Hellions of Havisham. Um, but he is a grieving widower. He's been grieving for 30 some years. And so he decides he needs an heir, um, even though he already has one. And so he lures per Portia there to marry him. And she's like, this is great. I will get married. Um, we'll pretend that this baby is his and then my baby won't be a bastard. But the way that the contract is worded, the his son, the Viscount, wants to save him from this fortune hunter. And so he steps in and marries her instead. Because of the rules of the contract, she either was going to be able to marry this guy or he was going to pay her out 
a sum of money. Um, and the son's like, well, you're not going to get any of our money, so I'm going to marry you instead. And then it's their romance. But she thought she wouldn't be foisting off a bastard on someone because she thought that this old man already had an heir, which was him. But now she's married to that heir. And now this baby that she's going to have, like, will be a bastard and he'll know it and she could be ruining the line. So it's a very, like Lorraine puts us in these positions that we don't know how the characters are going to get out of the situations. And I love that so much. Like I love it so much. Um, and then on top of that, there is an epilogue at the end that actually wraps up the whole trilogy. Um, that has to do with his father who raised these boys and loved them even though he was in so much pain for his dear departed wife. Um, and it wraps up just tears will happen. This book doesn't get enough love. I do hear about these ones quite a bit, but I'm telling you finish the trilogy because it ends in a great way. Then another historical oh, trilogy I want to talk about is the Bow Street series, Bow Street Runner series by Lisa Claypez. So this book, let's see, what's the first one? I think it goes Lady Sophia's Lover, or is Someone to Watch Over Me first? No, Someone to Watch Over Me is first, and this is actually an amnesia story about this woman who she wakes up beside a river, and her name is Vivian, um, and there is Grant Morgan, who is a Bow Street Runner, and he knows her because she's actually, like, spurned him before because he wanted to be her lover, and she didn't want to be his because he, like, wasn't wealthy enough. <laughs> And so he brings her into his home because he kind of wants to get revenge against her, but also he's going to try to help her figure out what happened to her. And like, it's a whole thing um, there, but this is an amnesia love story. And it's really great. Then there is Lady Sophia's Lover, which is about the head, Sir Ross Cannon, who's like the head of the Bow Street Runners. And then there's this woman named Lady Sophia. And obviously that's the name of the book and I love this a novel of seduction and so this was actually about like Ross is a little bit of a silver fox they don't show it in the picture but he's supposed to have some silver hairs in there um, and she decides to infiltrate his household because he's looking for like a housekeeper um, get him to fall in love and then like betray him because he's done something to a family member of hers that like ruined their life but of course Will she be able to carry that out when she falls for him? And then the third book is Worth Any Price, which I won't tell you. Well, we can say his name. There's someone named Nick Gentry, who you will actually meet in Lady Sophia's Lover. And he's a bit of a scoundrel and a rapscallion. And he has a very dark past. Um, but we see him at the beginning of this book going to a brothel to learn not to be afraid of sex is basically what we're going and so there's this madam who we actually see this madam in a few different Lisa Claypaz books I really like this madam she's pretty cool um and anyway Nick Gentry he is a um gun for hire he's a private investigator and things like that um and so he gets paid to go bring back this willful bride named Miss Charlotte Howard, who's supposed to marry this old creepy guy. There is trigger warnings for child grooming and assault, okay? Um, because this creepy old man, she has been promised to him for a very long time, and her parents basically let him groom her to be his wife all this time. And she's actually run away. Now, there are some cool... Um, there's some cool nuggets in here because Lady Sh Miss Charlotte Howard is actually being a companion to Lord Westcliff's mother at the time, which is kind of cool. So we get to see a cameo of Westcliff in this book, just so you know. But anyway, Nick Gentry ends up tracking this woman down and he's supposed to bring her back. However, once he finds her, number one, he thinks she's absolutely beautiful. Number two, he hears her side of the story and he's like, well, there's only one thing you can do. I either have to bring you back to him or you have to marry me so that he can't have you. And that's the setup of this book, which is just fantastic. Lisa Claypass, guys, she does it. She does it so well. I absolutely love her. 
I mean, read a trilogy by Lisa Claypool. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to dive into some contemporary trilogies that I have. So the first one that I want to talk about is the, um, I can't remember what the title of this series is called. Um, but it's the, it starts with a lie for a lie and then it's a favor for a favor and then a secret for a secret. Um, and this is by Helena Hunting and this is kind of a spinoff of the Puck series. Um, it happens before the, um, before like the lavender one, the purple, the pretty little lies one or whatever, because, um, we get to see like older versions of the Pucked characters, but they're not like, you know, but their kids aren't grown up yet kind of thing. And so this trilogy, of course, this is about hockey. Um, the couples in this are all really fun. The first couple in A Lie for a Lie, I talked about those in my secret baby one um, because they both end up in Alaska together. They have this amazing month together and then he has to leave in an emergency situation and doesn't have her phone number, which is crazy. And they aren't able to get a hold of each other. And then there's a favor for a favor. And this is about this woman goes to stay in her brother's apartment. I um, mean, it's across the way from this hockey player and like he gets injured one night and locked out of his apartment by his brother who's staying with him. And she's actually going to school to be a physical therapist. And he is like really like hurt by an injury. And so they decide to like work together to help her get her name out there um, as well as to help him get back to playing faster. So I really like that one. And then A Secret for a Secret. This book was absolutely delightful. This is about Queenie, who is the daughter of one of the coaches, and then Ryan Kingston. So it's King and Queenie, and I really love it. And this is a friends to lovers. Like, he's a good boy. He was in a long-term relationship, but it, like, wasn't going anywhere. So he, like, broke it off. Um, and Queenie was in a pretty horrible relationship a few years back. And... I really love this one for the communication. I love this one because Ryan doesn't jump to conclusions in a situation where he definitely could jump to conclusions and he wouldn't have been completely wrong to do that either. Um, but I just really, really loved this story so much. So I really love this trilogy. Um, Helena Hunting, I think that if there are things about Puck that were like too much for you, um, I think you could still read this trilogy without having read the Puck series and you might like it better. Um, I really enjoyed it. I put off reading it because I didn't see how I could love it as much as I love the Puck series. And I really, really enjoyed this trilogy a lot. Um, then there is the, um, one and only trilogy by Melanie Harlow. This is one of her older trilogies and I only actually own one of these because I've been keeping it out for used copies of this series, but I love her books. So the books are only him, only you, and then only love. Um, and so this one, I don't remember which order this one fits in. Let me see. This is the third one. Okay. So there's only you. Um, which is, I think that one's a friends to lovers. Um, I can't quite remember that one. It's been a while. I read these ones a while back, but I know I love it. And then only him, I think is the, um, secret baby one that I talked about in my, but it was a secret baby as in his daughter gets dropped off at his doorstep and he had no idea that she existed. And so his neighbor helps him raise her. And then there's only love, which this is my favorite one. Cause I own a copy and this is about an ex Marine who is living next door to this woman's grandma. And so he like is like her maintenance guy and will like help with stuff. And he's really cute, but he had a really bad divorce and like he has PTSD from his time overseas. Um, this also connects into Cloverly Farms. Like a lot of her series actually connect into Cloverly Farms before she ever even wrote Cloverly, which is really cool. Um, and then Stella, this starts on her birthday with her fiance breaking up with her and like, or she thinks he's going to propose and he breaks up with her and actually says he's been cheating on her. So she goes to stay with her grandma for a while. And then the grandma kind of plays Mac to make sure. And there's actually some chapters from Graham's point of view, which I just think is so cute because they don't feel out of place. Like Graham's will just pop in and be like, I think it's time for me to make my meatloaf. And, and have a dinner for these two. And I just really love that she's trying to take care of 
these two young people in her life. Um, but I really do love this trilogy. I'm sorry that I just was like, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. I didn't prepare good enough for this video. I know, but I know that most of her series are more than three. Well, actually she has quite a few trilogies as well. So you could look up Melanie Harlow if you like this one. The Happy Crazy Love series is a trilogy as well. Um, but the other ones are all like quartets. So yeah, but I really love Melanie Harlow. Harlow. Her books are always really charming. They usually have some funny parts in them and then they're like pretty steamy too. So you should definitely check her out. Um, then this is actually a trilogy I haven't finished yet. I'm going to be finishing the third book very soon because I'm going to buddy read it with my friend Crystal. But I loved the first two so much that I wanted to talk about them. Um, and so that that's actually the Hush Notes trilogy. So these are the first two. The third one is called Muses and Melodies. They're actually written by three different authors. So Serena Bowen writes Lies and Lullabies. Devney Perry wrote Riffs and Refrains. And then Rebecca Yaros wrote Muses and Melodies. Um, this one also starts with the secret baby trope. It's funny that the secret baby trope is like a staple in contemporary romance trilogies. That's funny that I picked ones that did. But this one is about, um, there was a one summer of friendship between these three and he was actually like a rock star on hiatus. He was writing songs for the summer and so he was out of the public eye and he went by like an alias there and he made this really great friend and then um, she actually was assaulted a few years ago and so he helped her work through some of that but then he leaves and he didn't give her his real name. And so soon after she discovers she's pregnant. And this is a case of like, she does find out who he is, but it's not until after the baby's born and then she doesn't know what to do. So this is one where it's right on the line for me, right? Because remember what I said about secret babies? I don't like when the secret is kept when it doesn't have to be kept. If it's kept because we can't get in contact, like it is with a lie for a lie, I'm okay with it. This one still worked because, because of how the hero finds out and how he reacts when he finds out. I love. And so it works for me. There's an exception to every rule. Okay. I get it. Also it was by Serena Bowen. So I was going to give it a go. And then there's riffs and refrains. This is about the drummer who's actually a woman and she is headed back to her small town because her grandmother has died and she has a rift between her family because when she went to be a rock star, they kind of disowned her. Her father is a pastor. Her family is all pretty religious. Um, and there was this boyfriend she had named Graham. And this is also a book where it's really confusing because his name is Graham and she called her grandmother Graham. So I'm just saying, Devney Perry, not the best choice you've ever made. Okay. Like she should have a different nickname for her grandma or we should have named Graham something else because I listened to the audio for this one and it was hard to distinguish when we were talking about Graham, her grandmother and Graham, the guy she used to fuck. Right. So this was an old flame and now he has a kid and he doesn't know if he's ready to like open his heart up to this woman who broke it before, but they end up working on a song together for her grandmother's funeral and it brings them closer together. And then Muses and Melodies is supposed to be about the third member from the band. Um, again, I haven't read this yet, but I'm very excited to read it because he's, we've seen him going through some troubles in the last two books and I really like the seeds that were laid for him. Now, the last trilogy I want to mention, and this was hard to pick one by this author, but it's called The Elite by Brooke Blaine and Ella Frank. And this is actually a male-male military romance. So they are some elite fighters. Think Top Gun, but with sword crossing, okay? With some gay stuff. It's great. And so there's these two guys who, the very first, like, beginning is them meeting at a gay bar and, like, the one guy hitting on him and the other guy was like, no. And then they go to flight school and the guy he was hitting on is the son of like the top dog, like the best pilot they've ever had. And they end up getting paired together for drills and the sexual tension is absolutely crazy. And so it's how will they deal with not only like one of them not being out that he's gay and having a pretty like bigoted father and like homophobic dad, as well as the element of like all these guys living and working together. And I really enjoyed this trilogy. Um, Brooklyn and Ella Frank, they write some great male-male books together. Like, 
on point. And these are both two, the alpha, the alpha-ist of alpha men you've ever met. And those are my favorite in a gay romance when they're both just so alpha. And so it's like, I'm not like beating another person into submission, but I'm going to sex them into submission. That's a term. I just coined it. Sex someone into submission. Boom. Handle it. Just saying. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for my favorite trilogies video. This is by no means an extensive exhaustive list. It was just some that I threw together that I've read pretty much in the last year. I probably read these. Um, let me know some of your favorite trilogies, historical or otherwise. It might be harder than you think to find trilogies. I thought of a few more once I was sitting down because I like actually have some of them over there. Like Sarah McLean and Eva Lee have some that are also really good. But that's where we're at. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell so you know when I upload. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.